Car Magazine is here at Silverstone for a very special track test. We've got six of the maddest road legal track cars you can buy. The Lotus Exige Cup 430, the beautiful Gianarelli Design 1, the Caterham 7, still a benchmark for driving fun even after all these years. Just next to it, the Flyweight Aerial Atom 4, the Radical Rapture, perhaps the most crazy car with number plates you can buy today. And just next to that, the McLaren 620R, the closest thing to a road legal GT racing car. And joining us to test all these cars as a special expert judge is W Series champion, Jamie Chadwick. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, I can't wait. So we're gonna be jumping in and out of all of these cars here. Is there any particular one of them that's caught your eye? Honestly, they all have. There's quite a few I've never driven before as well. So yeah, we've got the perfect track for it, perfect day. And uh, yeah, can't wait. Absolutely, well, let's get started. Jamie starts in the Aerial Atom 4. It's lower, stiffer, wider than Atoms of old, but it still looks great, like a rolling cutaway drawing. The Atom 4 uses the turbocharged engine from the Honda Civic Type R. Now, Atoms of old had supercharged engines in the high-end models, with an amazing high-pitched kind of scream to them. We thought that might have gone missing from this new turbocharged version, but it still sounds amazing. There's all kinds of squeaks, flutters, squawks from behind the driver. Previous aerial atoms could be a little bit tricky on the limits, but the new Atom 4 feels incredibly well sorted. You're never in any doubt of what it's up to. The handling is just as transparent as it is to look at. The Radical Rapture is fully road legal, but it's very much at the drive to and from the circuit only end of the scale. It's basically a racing car with number plates and a handbrake. You sit right in the middle of the car, but it feels almost as if you're over the front axle, like an astronaut at the tip of a ground level rocket. It should feel intimidating, and at first it does, but the car's actually on your side. It's incredibly honest and friendly, and feels more like a cart than a car. Before too long, you're pushing it like you've been driving it for years. If the Radical is right the way to the race car end of the scale, the Gianarelli Design 1 is right the way down at the road car end of the scale. It's a beautiful, built-to-order, boutique sports car. Only 499 will be built, and no two will be the same. Despite the Gianarelli's shape, it's not front-engined, but mid-engined, and its engine comes from an old Nissan. You'd never believe it to hear it, though. So the Gianarelli is the newest design on the block here, and then the Caterham 7, or the Lotus 7 as it began, is the oldest one here, as old as the hills, and yet still one of the most entertaining cars to drive in the world. 
This is the wide-bodied S57, and Jamie doesn't quite fit as snugly as she does in the other cars, but she still wrestles it to a very quick time and some entertaining angles. Double the weight of the Caterham, and a lot more than double the price. It's the £250,000 McLaren 620R. The 620R is the closest thing to a road-going GT4 racing car. In fact, so close to its GT racing sibling, it even comes with a set of slick tyres that you can fit at the circuit. With the slick tyres fitted, Jamie sets the fastest time of the day in the 620R. Last but definitely not least is the Lotus Exige Cup 430, the most powerful, most expensive and most ruthlessly stripped out version of Hethel's hairiest car. From the exposed gear change mechanism to the race derived aero, it's a car built for the circuits but it's also great fun on the road. Out on the circuits, both Jamie and I find the gear change just a little bit obstructive but it's still one of the quickest cars here and definitely one of the most fun. So we've got plenty of laps in, <laughs> plenty of uh, the smell of burning tyres is still in the air. So let's run through what do you reckon to each car, the Lotus Exige, let's start with that. Yeah, the Lotus was awesome, a uh, real proper track car, you yeah. can really feel it and throw it around um, and yeah, it sounds incredible as well, so yeah, love yeah, that really car. It really shrieks doesn't it, with that titanium does. exhaust. Yeah, really love driving that car. I think there's a few things I would change in it, it wasn't the perfect car, but yeah, a lot of fun. And uh, right next to it, the Gianarelli design one, again, a great sounding car. It sounded almost like a historic when you set off out of the pits. Yeah, that caught me out. I had no idea that's what it was going to sound like at all. And especially on the blips on the downshifts, it was incredible. Yeah. Um, you drive it a lot slower, I think. You definitely don't take it to its limit. You don't rag it nearly as much. But sure. from a pure feeling point of view, just with the sound, it was really yeah. cool. It spit some good flames too. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> and then the Caterham 7, I mean, you've done a bit of racing in Caterhams. You've spent a bit of track time in them, and this one didn't disappoint. No, I think. I was a bit biased, but definitely the Caterham's, for the fun factor, the top. I, it was everything I wanted it to be. You could throw it around a track like this, it was perfect for, and yeah, I had so much fun driving that. Brilliant. And next to it, the aerial, kind of a modern take on the 7 Formula, and that impressed you as well? It did. I had never driven an aerial before, and the speed of it caught me out, actually. Yeah, it it's a hurt. lot quicker than I thought my neck. Yeah. Uh, I've raced cars, but that <laughs> even took me back. So um, yeah, a lot of fun, um, but yeah, I mean, very similar to the Caterham in terms of the fun factor, driving yeah. around, throwing it around the track. It was, uh, yeah, good fun. 
And just beyond that, the Radical Rapture, perhaps the closest thing here to a pure racing car, even though it's one with a handbrake and number plates. Yeah, I can't believe taking that on the road. I <laughs> uh, wouldn't want to be going over any speed bumps in that. But yeah, I mean, it's a great car. Um, it's a lot quicker than I thought it would be. I think the main thing was this track maybe isn't so suited for it. It's got a bit more downforce. Yeah. I think it will be suited to a bit more of an open, faster yeah, track. Kind of comes but alive at exactly with the downforce, speeds. but even still, the braking performance and actually being able to optimise that aero was pretty cool. And then the McLaren 620R. I mean, you've raced GT4 cars at the Nurburgring even at night. <laughs> so, um, does that feel close? Does it feel like a real GT4 car? I was going to say when we put the slicks on it, it was more or less there or thereabouts for a GT4 right. car. So, yeah, an incredible car, but for me, a little bit more of a GT car. Okay. I think a bit more sports car esque. Great fun. It's very refined, does everything you want it to do. But in terms of having the most fun on the track, I would say the Caterham probably stood out the most for me. So even after 50 years, the Caterham, the Lotus 7, still... Still <laughs> number one. <laughs> fantastic. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you no very worries. much. For the full story, pick up a copy of the January issue of Car.